Welcome to the 2024 Tokyo Motorcycle Show. This is the 51st annual event, bringing us this incredible show since 1973. As always, the top manufacturers who are worth their salt are here. We're going to go through and check out everything in its entirety. We have some exclusive interviews and all kinds of other shenanigans. Let's get started. We're going to kickstart this madness with one of my all-time favorites, MV Agusta. So this new edition of the Super Veloce, there are 300 available worldwide. It's called the 98, which is a shout out to the very first MV Agusta in 1945, the MV 98, limited edition. Get it while it's hot. This is the MV Agusta Rush. It'll set you back about 65 grand. Really beautiful to look at. Let's get geeky for a second. So this falls into the hyper naked category. It's an inline four, pumps out an eye-watering 208 horse. This is the Brutale. This is beautiful machines. This is uh, about 45 grand for this. 1,000 cc. This is MV Agusta's new adventure tourer, the LXP Orioli. Only 500 are being made, so you better get in the waiting line. So the Orioli has an inline triple, 930cc. A little MV Agusta trivia for you. The company was started by Count Giovanni Augusta in the early 20th century, making airplanes to begin with. And after he died, his son took over and they began making motorcycles. They were actually forbidden from making airplanes after World War II in Italy due to the war, losing the war. Hey guys, hope you're enjoying the show so far. I have a small favor to ask. Last year's Tokyo Motorcycle Show got more than 2.1 million views, which is amazing. But literally 99.1% of viewers are not subscribed to the channel. By subscribing to the channel, you can help us make bigger and better productions. And you have my word that I'll continue to bring you the best motorcycle and car related content from here in Japan. That's my promise to you. Thanks for subscribing.
開発コンセプトライターファーサーファーサーとにかく軽くレーシングインスパイアデザインレースのフィードバック続きましてファーストジョニーザピック、えー、昨年のエンスージアストコレクションファーストジョニーで登場したレーシングマスコットの、えー、ジョニーザピックもうこちらもレースの象徴として、えー、反対側に、えー、あしらわれております Here is the new road glide. So this is the new Road Glide CVO from Harley. Of course, the CVO program started in, I think, 1999, so it's the 25th anniversary custom vehicle operations. Each year, they take a select number of bikes and they make a limited edition vehicle. So they've gone with a more aggressive kind of look than they have from past Road Glides. This has the shark nose fairing, integrated LED headlights, some other cool little features like this wind baffle, you can adjust it. So when you're on the highway, if you're getting too much wind on your legs, you can adjust that. Variable valve timing, integrated in the engine. It's a 1977cc, basically 2000cc engine, available only on the CVO model. Integrated speakers in the back here, so you have surround sound. You got the nice CVO badge here. Paint, bigger engines, other details. This also has a touchscreen TFT display. Beautiful bike. And when you buy the CVO starting this year, you get one of these little gems. This is the Harley Davidson branded Cardo Pack Talk Edge helmet communication device. The Pack Talk Edge uses Cardo's original technology, dynamic mesh communication. DMC allows two or three riders on up to 15 riders to seamlessly connect and stay connected for up to a one mile range. If you get disconnected, it automatically reconnects as soon as you're back in range. And DMC allows other major brands to connect as well. Other deal maker features include my favorite, the air mount. Locked and loaded. A really cool feature in the Cardo app is voice recording. You can record your conversations with other riders and it's saved to your smartphone for playback or sharing. It's waterproof. Pack Talk Edge comes with high fidelity JBL speakers for excellent sound quality. Profile settings in the app allow for dialing in your ideal sound. Pack Talk Edge comes with everything you need to mount it to a full or open face helmet. And there's an additional kit available for half face helmets too. So be sure and check out the Pack Talk Edge and Cardo's other top shelf helmet communication devices. Link is in the description. And if you want to save a few bucks, Use this code when you check out. All right, let's get back to the show. This is the fire blade. Ooh, man, that's a rocket. It has the same power plant as last year's model. 1,000 cc in line four, about 214 horse. This one's got some revamped bits and pieces in the engine, which produces higher power at lower revs. A beast of a track bike. The winglets on the fairing are also new for the 2024 model. This will set you back close to 30 grand. Those are cool. It's got the wings on the fairing. <laughs> 
So this is the CB650R 2024 model. And this is equipped with the E-clutch. So what that is is basically a quick shifter. No need to use the clutch. You just shift. So this is the CB650. This is the new Africa Twin. We were here three hours early. This is the press briefing in the Honda booth. It's always super popular here and you can hardly get around. So we're doing our best. This is the CB1000 Hornet. Here we have the Rebel 1100. It's a Rebel 250. GB350C Honda. Got some old school looks. This is the SCE Concept Scooter by Honda. So this is the Husqvarna Norden, and I've ridden these, a couple, friend of mine has a couple of them, and yeah, it's a, it's a fun off-road, on-road bike, wheelie controlled, which is never a good thing. You see a lot of these around Tokyo. This is the Husqvarna Vitpilin, Vitpilin 400cc. Really cool styling. This is the Svartpilin. We're going to have to get a pronunciation check on that. I will be the first to admit that I destroy pronunciations with foreign words. And as a voice actor, that's maybe not a good thing. Here's the Husqvarna Supermoto. This is cool. Also happy to have them back. They weren't here last year either. 
として生まれ変わりましたビットピレーそしてスパルトピレーをご紹介させていただいて This is the FTRR Carbon. What a nice one, huh? This is the Indian Super Hooligan. It's a 1200. This is the Scout. <laughs> so this is a custom Indian by Humongous Custom Cycles. the Roadmaster. We fulfilled their promise by pushing ourselves to be the driving force in what's next for American motorcycle. We've done some amazing things together. The original Indian motorcycle wreck dominated racing in the 50s. Ital Jet goes back to 1995. Iconic and unconventional scooters, as you can see. Loads of cool new models on show here. Just kick butt, skeletal Italian beauty. Personally, I need something a tad more utilitarian. This is the new Dragster 300. It's a fuel injected single, 23 horsepower, and a CVT transmission. The Taljet has always gone outlandish, over practical. But if you've got room in the garage, why not? So Benelli has an enormous booth here. It's one of the larger ones here at the Tokyo Motorcycle Show. And I don't know if I've ever actually seen a Benelli on the street here in Tokyo. I'm on the roads every day, riding to work, all over the city, and I honestly don't remember seeing a Benelli. Perhaps that's why they're making their push. This is the Benelli Miro Speciale. This is a 250. So this is Benelli's adventure tour. Seems everybody's in that game now. the TRK. It's a 500cc. It looks a lot bigger than that. Oh, sweet. This is the NRA edition of the Aprilia.
The new S1000XR Sports Tour. It's got a boost in performance from the 2023 model. According to BMW, five horse more for around 170. It's an inline four and it has revised rider ergonomics. Now compare that to the first ever M1000XR. This is freaking hot. It's beautiful. Similar specs to the S1000, but with beefier acceleration and output as you'd expect from an M-Series. We are here with Tech from BMW. Hello. Thank you for joining us. What is the Roctane? The Roctane meaning the, the rock roll and the, you know the fuel as an octane. Okay. So we mix together for rock and roll and the energy octane, the Roctane. Rock and roll or rock rocket? And rock and roll. Rock and roll. <laughs> nice. Yeah. That's cool. That's yeah. cool. It's a member of the R18 family. Yeah. And what is different with the Roctane compared to uh, previous or other R18 models uh, for this year? Yeah, we are actually mixed together with the standard R18 on the front side mm -hmm. and the rear side we're using for the R18B, the hard case. Okay, okay. And uh, as a different part is the hoist, mm -hmm. the front wheel, we put on the huge front wheel. Uh, yeah, it is huge. Yeah. And the rear wheel, actually we put on the 18 inches the rear wheel. Oh wow. Yeah. So how does that affect the rideability of the bike? It's it's gonna be more the tight and the sporty and then when prone to the mountain winding, it's sharp handling and more sports riding. It's got a huge boxer engine, it's 1800 cc, black chrome exhaust. Is it a cruiser? Is it a bagger? I think it might be something right in between. The new BMW R12 Cruiser, it's got a torquey 1170cc, 95 horse boxer engine, shaft drive, it's about 10 horse less than its juicy counterpart, the R12 9T, which we'll get to next. So this is the R12 9T, the predecessor was the R90, what a beautiful bike. I've been really excited about seeing this. Brushed aluminum tank. It's got the same engine as the R90, but other upgrades or changes are to the frame. You can see the exposed frame. Of course, the 1200cc opposed twin. It's got the spoked wheels. It's the conical exhaust.
優れたエルゴノミックスライディングモードプロレースライディングモードはスポーツライディングからツーリングタンデムツーリングまであらゆるシーンに対応 Here we have the R1250 GS. That's a wide body craft. This is the Adventure Ultimate Edition. As I've said before, these are big bikes, and I see them occasionally here in Tokyo, and it's just like, dude, come on. This is not a commuter bike. Badass, yes. This is the M1000RR Superbike. This thing is hot. A bunch of different riding modes are available. Carbon winglets increase the downforce on the front wheel, which will come in handy when you're pushing this thing to its top speed of 190 miles per hour. This is something new also. It's got these cooling ducts to cool down the front brake calipers, up to 50 degrees cooler. This is the new BMW CEO2, and I gotta tell you guys, I love this scooter. I was on the fence before, but it just gets cooler and cooler the more you look at it. Top speed of about 60 miles an hour. It's cool. <laughs> This is cool. This is the R1300 GS. The boss hoss. To commemorate the 100th anniversary of Meguro Manufacturing Company, Kawasaki has a couple of new retro styled 250cc bikes out the W230 and the Meguro S1. Now, Meguro was one of the first motorcycle manufacturers in Japan, and they merged with Kawasaki long ago. They're both air cooled 250cc singles. Similar styling to the Estrella, which has been around since the early 90s. This is the Ninja 1000SX, 40th anniversary. Can you believe that? It's been 40 years since the Ninja started. Really, really nice riding position. It's quite upright, comfortable for long rides, I would imagine. I like it. Love this rich red, the black contrast. Beautiful bike. Obvious flashbacks to the GPZ 900 that Tomson rocked in Top Gun. It's got an inline four and cranks out 142 horse.
So this is the Kawasaki HEV. What's really cool about this is you can choose whether you're gonna use the engine, the motor, or a combination of the two. These things accelerate like a super bike when you use the two simultaneously. The size is like a 400 cc bike. It's actually, the engine is a 451 cc, I think, but very cool. Really looking forward to test riding one of these. This is the Kawasaki ZE1 full electric bike. It's kind of based on a naked frame. 72 kilometer range. The riding size is like a 400 cc bike. All right, I'm here with Yoshida-san from Kawasaki. Yoshida We're checking out the Ninja H2 SX. It's the 2024 model. We want to know what is different about the last year's model and the 2024. えー、そうですね。あの、主にあの、23年モデルからは、え、こういったえ、外観ですね。こういったあの、色味、え、グリーン、こういったところが大きくカラーリングだけのえ、チェンジとなっております。はい。はい。Okay, so last year's model and, and the new model, engine, nothing's really changed. So the H2R is the track only bike. This is the H2SX, which is street legal. The H2R is not available in Japan right now, is that correct? そうですね。日本国内ではこちらですね、いつ maybe I should go to America. So did they re-import suru? いや、ちょっと難しいからな。This is the Bimota KB4. In case you didn't know, Kawasaki bought Bimota. So they use Kawasaki engines. We are here with Dan and Modi from Cardo. Sir, awesome to see you again. Great being here again. Yeah, it's a wonderful to day here in Tokyo. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So I want to ask you about Cardo products. So. The helmet communication market is becoming more... The, the market for helmet communication devices seems to be becoming more and more congested. Cardo, of course, is at the top. But for that, you also pay a premium. The consumer pays a premium. So what is it about Cardo products that make it worthwhile paying that premium? So. The simple answer is, you know, like a Toyota Yaris or a Mercedes S-Class would both get you from point A to point B. However, the way they do it would be completely different. Same with Cardo. We invented Bluetooth communication, but we're also the first with mesh, and our intercom is still the best in the business. We're the first to bring premium sound. All our products are waterproof, and on top of that, you can activate them by your voice. Just say, hey, Cardo, so you need not bother 
with pressing buttons or getting your hands off the handlebar. Now, all these inventions demand a lot of research and development to perfect. You get what you pay for, and sure. with Cardo, you get the best. Okay. And wait for November 4th, where we'll be coming with something completely different for the motorcycle world to Ooh. enjoy. Yep. Stay tuned for that. 24, exciting year from Cardo. Excellent. Thanks so much, Dan. Appreciate it. Welcome. Enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you. All right, so this is the new 2024 Ducati Panigale. Panigale is a manufacturing town in Italy. Notice these wings on the fairing. Very cool <laughs> carbon fiber detail. Engines of V4, 1100 cc. So this is the Multistrada V4S. One of my all time favorite Ducati bikes. Actually, I used to have an ST2 that I rode all over Hokkaido. Loved that bike, but I had a problem getting parts. There was an issue with the clutch and I had to stop riding it for almost a month before the parts came in. And that's NG in my book. So it was sayonara to the Duke. This is hilarious. I'm walking through the Dunlop booth and I hear a voice. I'm like, that sounds familiar. It should, because it's me. How hilarious is that? I don't remember recording this. I don't remember a lot of stuff. Sportmax Q5A, no surroundings. So this is Energica's Xperia model, their entry into adventure touring. You can actually do some touring because the range is over 400 kilometers. So things are changing. It's got the side cases, pannier, top case. Really nice bike. Okay. All right, let's turn it on. Shazam. Oh, it's a really cool TFT display. Mm -hmm. 
Energica is an Italian brand of electric motorcycles. Really slick designs as we'd expect out of Italy. These are cool. Totally collapsible. You can throw it in the back of your car. This is the all-electric fellow. They weigh about 50 kilograms. So these have a range of about 140 kilometers. Top speed 120, not too shabby. Full charge in nine to 10 hours. トライアンクブース、ご来場いただきましてまことにありがとうございます。間もなくのお時間からこちらトライアンクブースでは新型モデルのプレスカンファレンスを行ってまいります。ぜひ皆様ブースライにお集まりいただきますようにお願いいたします
premium finishes. Here we have the Scrambler 400X. Oh, this is slick. This is the Ruxton final edition. Yes, it's the final production run and limited edition of this legend. 1200cc parallel twin. I can't believe they're really ending it. It's actually a 2025 model release. Absolutely love the metallic green, classy little gold stripes on it. This is the Rocket 3R Storm. And I'm always in awe when I look at this bike. 2500cc triple. I mean, look at the scale on this. The Rocket 3R Storm, beautiful. It's an absolute beast. This is the Daytona 660. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, they make custom tunable exhausts. So if you really want to annoy your neighbors, you can set it accordingly. So there are actually valves inside the exhaust ports that you can electronically adjust to alter the sound. I think we saw this bobber R18 at the last year's show with the ape hangers. Here we have the all-female Queen Stars biker cop squad doing their thing. No evil Knievel stuff here, but some impressive maneuvers. We've made it to the KTM booth. They were a no-show at the 2023 Tokyo Motorcycle Show, so I am so pleased to see them here. So KTM, Husqvarna, MV Agusta are all under the same group. KTM has taken a 50% sharehold in MV Agusta.
It's a 125 Mondial. This is cute. This is the Papio. 125cc. I think we saw this baby last year. I still haven't sold it. I wonder why. The Tessie H2C from Moto Corse. Oh cool, this is a new GSX 1000, Sport Touring. New for the Katana Sport bike this year is Ride by Wire and it has a clutchless quick shift system which so many bikes have now. Advanced traction control and a slew of other new features. Same 1000cc GSXR based inline four. Four into one exhaust. I don't mean to be picky, Suzuki, but that decal looks a bit cheesy. The new Hayabusa, Ultimate Sport. Ultimate Sport was the new category of bike that Hayabusa ushered in in 1999. At the time, the world's fastest production bike. Here's the series of V-Strom, this is the 800. And over here we've got the 1050. The GSX 8R. The concept is the new standard of sport. Years of 
on the field handle so that it's more comfortable for the user. Bonneville T120 black, all blacked out. This is a after parts shop. Got a barber style here. Moton Customs. Royal Enfield has an amazing lineup this year on display. Man, look at this. This is probably my favorite collaboration in a long time. Local Tokyo custom shop, Cherry's Company, tied up with Royal Enfield for this sidecar masterpiece called Challenger. It's based on the new Super Meteor 650, and it's largely unrecognizable. Many of the parts are one-offs, like the entirely handmade front end. It's really an exquisite custom build. This piece of history is the first Royal Enfield motorcycle from 1901.
Kawasaki Z900 seems to be the bike of choice for a lot of aftermarket parts makers. This is the American dream. They make pipes. These are so hot. We saw some of these Kawasaki's at the last motorcycle show. This is a uh, Arki. They make custom parts largely for the Kawasaki. So we're seeing more and more electric bikes on offer. So these have about a 140 kilometer range in echo mode. Sport mode, I guess 70 kilometers. So it's got a 90 kilometer range and about 50 kilometer an hour top speed, the Tromox. It's kind of like the Grom, the Honda Grom. So I was very close to pulling the trigger on a sidecar last month. Went out, test rode it. In the end, I just decided it wasn't gonna be for me. Sidecars are a lot of work to ride. The one I test rode was actually a Yamaha Dragstar with a Watsonian British sidecar on it. Great to look at, but man, they are a lot of work to ride. <laughs> this is the MT-10. This is a hot new color scheme, this dark gray with the teal. What's really cool is they have these sound holes on either side of the tank, which allow for the noise from the engine to come out and excite you. This is the Niken GT. You look at that front end on that thing. Tenair 700. I've been super excited about the revamped MT-09. This new model rocks an upgraded 890cc inline triple. More power, more torque, new bodywork, LED-styled headlights. Plus, they've tweaked the chassis for better handling and stability. They've also made the riding position more aggressive and more comfortable.
わっちゃうあそう<笑>すげえ安定してるっていうか。This is the new Tracer 9 GT Plus Sport Tourer. Unfortunately, we didn't get more footage of it, but it's an 890cc inline three, loads of tech in this beauty, including millimeter wave radar, which detects distance of vehicles ahead. And that's linked to the adaptive cruise control and unified brake system. I loved touring on a Tracer 900 in Hokkaido, long distances and zero fatigue. Really a nice bike. It's the R1. Here we have the Yamaha XSR 900 GP. We saw this at the mobility show. These things are awesome. I keep blowing that horn, but I'm telling you, if you haven't ridden an XSR 900, you do not know what you're missing. It's kind of a shout back to the 80s, like YZR race bikes. It's got the seat hump, boxy rear end. All right, guys, well, thanks for joining us here at the 2024 Tokyo Motorcycle Show. As always, this event never disappoints. We saw some incredible bikes from all the top manufacturers around the world. Let us know in the comments what you enjoyed the most. And we'll be seeing you on the next one. Be sure to like and subscribe. We'll catch you later. Ciao for now. Mount Fuji off in the distance, the sun going down. That's a wrap. The 2024 Tokyo Motorcycle Show is behind us.